don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to help support this channel and this amazing community that you guys are all part of. Appreciate that. Later. Okay, well, let's let's back up a little bit here. We don't have like a million comments. Uh, For the people. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, something regarding. Oh, you see, this was like when we we're talking about Bruce Lee. Uh, we were talking about like you know that movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. And, and how they were saying how like Bruce Lee would actually beat up his stunt doubles. So. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, man. I don't think Bruce Lee was like some kind of douchebag walking around because I think that maybe Quentin Tarantino like heard some stories from other stuntmen. But you know what I mean? It's I, yeah. So the biggest thing about Bruce Lee is like people don't realize the amount of pain that guy was in. Like, so going back to remember, we t we talked about like what a, a fighter is. A torn sackle nerve. So he got a torn sackle nerve doing good morning exercises. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's pretty much where you put a barbell on your back and you hinge at your hips forward with the barbell on your back. He did him too heavy and tore his sackle nerve, and that's what put him in the hospital. They told him he'd never walk again. And then he was on cort uh, cortisol shots for inflammation, right? Couldn't jump. Barely could walk, started mm -hmm. having seizures from pain meds. Um, they, you know, they say recently they just found a bunch of uh, documentation of him writing to his friend asking for blow cocaine, you know, because that's what <laughs> stimulated him for train. It was huge. Right, was, right. Yeah. The whole cocaine thing. Yeah, I've heard about that. Like, I, yeah, didn't, so I, that, didn't, I didn't I didn't have the time to, like, uh, watch some videos and really understand. And yeah, it so. Well, Whatever. people don't realize the, uh, cocaine was a huge thing back in the time. It was pretty common. People used it. Coca-Cola produced it. You know, it was used in the common household to just get chores done. Think about it. It was like the, the energy drink back in the day. But <laughs> cocaine also is a local anesthetic. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the same as lidocaine and novocaine, right? So it's a local anesthetic. It can cause numbness. So if he was a dickhead on set, yeah, I would be too. I, dude, think about it. You're trying to do all these filming and all this stunt work and all this stuff. You're in chronic pain, like all the time, chronic pain, having seizures, your body's failing on you. You know, you don't like think about that. He was, and he had two kids. Can you imagine dying, being in chronic pain and having two kids you're going to leave behind? Think about what that guy went through emotionally. And then, so, I mean, for me, myself, you know, he probably didn't show a lot of that, but for me, myself, knowing that about him, like makes me respect him a lot more, but at the same time, that's how human he was. He was a hurt individual, the broken back. Like that's, that's the reality of it. Great martial arts, but he was not like, imagine if he wasn't hurt. Imagine if he could have done what, everything he wanted to do, you know, his whole one leg fighting style, you know, his fighting style, right? The fencing footwork. Yeah, Why do you think yeah. he developed it that way? Oh yeah. It's because one of his legs didn't work properly. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I think I, um, I, I saw a video on that regarding like he actually put his, uh, his strong leg forward. Yes. So that's yeah. It's called a pow yeah, power lead aware. southpaw. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I wasn't aware because this, uh, the other leg didn't work or yeah, not, it, it just, it was, it was injured. injured. He couldn't flex as well. So, you know, you have to adapt you have to learn and his fine style, like his, his, uh, Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do is still taught. Um, you know, and like I said before, it's great style. It's got a lot of great concepts and then you combine it with a lot of the newer age mixed martial arts, the same, you know, different move set, but same principles, awesome style. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got a question from, uh, from one of the guys here in the community. Uh, it's actually from area. He wants to know, like, are you a fighter? Am I a professional fighter? Uh, just, are you a fighter? So he didn't, he didn't uh, specify. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you do. I'll let you answer that so, one. So, so I'm I'm the type of guy, you know. <laughs> this is kind of an interesting story about me. All right. Um, so, so I'm that asshole. <laughs> I'm that <laughs> asshole that goes to gyms and just, dude. I go like I. Nobody really like. I've done my own thing, but I've been in so many gyms and sparring with so many people and. Back in the day, underground MMA was big. Like we did so many fights in sand pits. It was ridiculous. I'd fight four, five times a night sometimes. And dude, street fights, same thing. Like back in my hometown, a lot of the street gangs knew martial arts. Like I remember there was this one guy, we didn't even have like beef. Our crews didn't have beef, but he was like their known fighter. Like, oh yeah. Like when fights broke out that like that you'd pick your strongest soldiers. Like, Hey, that guy versus that guy. It wasn't like, oh, hey, let's pull out guns and shoot each other. No, 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 no. 
It was mm-hmm. your martial arts versus my martial arts. So like there's people don't understand, like there's different eras and, and, and they, they want to discredit it. You know, they're like, Oh, well that's not ring fighting. That's not real fighting. Let me explain. This. Kimbo slice, Jorge Mastoval. Where did all, where did these guys come? Oh yeah, that's right. The streets, the streets. And then they went to the UFC, the streets. Okay. So people don't want to talk about, you know, street fighters or not real fight. Dude, the only thing that separates street fighters and professional fighters is pay and athleticism. So like I said, going back to, you know, having uh, martial arts mentality, street fighting brutality. Mm-hmm. If you want to push yourself to the, the next level, right. Of, of martial arts, you need to stop worshiping titles. You need to stop worshiping champions, freaking blah, 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 blah. Um, when I entered my power breaking competitions, right. I, nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew what relentless style was. John Inhan Yusu. Nobody knew what that was. Mm-hmm. I went in there and I defeated multiple world champions. And guess who taught me? I taught me. I learned how to break because I had been doing so much bare knuckle. I taught mm-hmm. myself how to break by watching videos, learning how the pros did it, and trying to better them. And I trained in my backyard. Nobody ch- showed me how to smash through conk. I did that because I wanted to. So I'm a firm believer, titles or not, you can be dangerous at any realm, and you can be dangerous to any man at any realm. Um you know, I got I got friends who got in some scraps and some bar scraps with guys that were, you know, they're like, yeah, we're MMA fighters, bro. We all train together. And my friends are like, we don't care. We don't give a shit who you are. Sorry. And guess what? Things got ugly. And guys that thought their MMA skills were going to carry over that had never been, you know, hit with a bottle, smashed with a chair, hit with a baton. <laughs> like, that's a little different, <laughs> you know? So I tell people, like, don't don't think just because you train MMA or you've had a couple of pro fights. BJ Penn, guess what happened to BJ Penn? He got oh, yeah, knocked yeah. out in a street fight. Knocked out in a street fight. G, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, DJ Tilshaw or whatever. What happened to him? Oh, yeah, he was drunk, talking crap to a bouncer. What happened to him? Oh, yeah, choked out. The whole thing with Colby Covington and stinking uh, Jorge Masvidal. Masvidal mm-hmm. cracked him outside of the ring and took him out. Why do you, why do you win in the ring? But he did Guess what? Because a fight is a fight is a fight is a fight. It doesn't matter if you fight as a pro or fight on the street. Like I said, there comes a certain point where everybody's got a puncher's chance, you know? And then everything else is statistics, really, you know? I just try to compare myself to what does a top-level athlete do? Like, you look at Muhammad Ali. How many punches did Muhammad Ali throw in uh, a round of boxing? You know his average? 73. 73. That's how many, how many punches he'd throw on average uh, as a professional heavyweight. So 73 punches. So for me, myself, I know if I can throw 73 punches in a three-minute round, right, and I can do that consistently, I have the cardio and the stamina of Muhammad Ali. You know, so that's how you kind of base yourself. Like, if I know the strongest man can deadlift 1,000 pounds and I can lift 1,000 pounds as well, that's how you compete. That's a great thing about the internet. That's a great thing about statistics and math. You mm-hmm. can figure out where you lie in the realm of things just simply by looking up records, you know? Yeah, that's pretty smart. I never thought of it that way. Like if you could, you could, uh, you could use that as a, as a measuring stick. Okay. This is where the top guys in the world are. If I get there or close to there, then, you know, totally, totally. And like, that's what I said, like Francis Ngannou, he's the, he has the strongest strike.